Well, you know, it's I'm laughing because I had this conversation earlier with your guest that you had on a while back, Barry McGee. Oh yes. And we were talking about, you know, it's it's all in his plans. Right. It's it's all in his plans. So yes, everything that has happened in my life. The people that I've met, the website that I had being a Christian website, the fact that you found me and, and invited me on, the fact that I was not out working on a cruise ship and I was available to be here to do right. this show, it's all in His plan. And as long as we just open our ears and pay attention, we can hear His voice that we know that we're following within what He wants us to do. So yes, was, was, was He planting those seeds way back then? Yes. I okay. So definitely agree with that. Let's go with that, though, with how God leads you and plans your life. Kind of go into that a little bit deeper with me because I know that's true for my own life. And sometimes you don't even realize that he's planning it out. You look back on it later and say, but show, you know, tell, help us understand that a little bit better. But isn't that the way he works though? Absolutely. You don't realize it until after the fact. You go, that's why I met that person. Right. That's why I read that book. That's why I turned the channel at that particular moment to hear that message. Right. It's just, it's, it's the way God works. Well, and I think so much, uh, so many times though, we don't even give God credit for oh, being there. You know, a lot of times, and certainly uh, in my uh, teen years and young adult life, I never gave God credit. In fact, I got saved at the age of thirteen. Oh wow! And from that point on, I kind of ignored God for quite a few years. I'm not happy with a lot of things that I did in my life, and a lot of things I'm sure I'll be answering for. But He kept working on me. Uh -huh. And you know, when when things get tougher and tougher and tougher, and you look for answers here and there and everywhere and you finally turn to God, not that your life is going to be a bed of roses after you accept Jesus right. as your Lord and Savior, but certainly being in His will makes it bearable. Uh -huh. You know, if you still have problems, at least you're following what He wants you to do. Right. Well, I know we're going we're gonna to take a quick break here, and you're going to go over to the stage. And, I am. And, would you please? Okay. And, uh, I'd like to show you something kind of unusual, a little magic trick involving the use of a piece of rope. Hopefully everybody here knows about rope. A rope has two ends and a middle. Well, this rope has two ends and a middle. Watch closely. I'm going to tie the two ends of this rope together. So what I have now is a big loop of rope tied together here. I'm now going to cut this rope using my magical scissors. So what I have now are two pieces of rope exactly the same length. Made that one too long, didn't I? <laughs> or else that one's too short. That's okay, I'll stretch it. Yep. If you'll remember, when I started this trick, what I had was one piece of rope. The rope was about this long, but the rope had no cuts. No breaks, no gaps in it at all. That's what I have once again. I'm going to do the trick again. This time I won't tie the knot. Because I tied the knot about nine years ago. Like I said, I won't tie the knot. Check it out. One end of the rope down in my hand like this. I'm not sure how that happens myself. The second end goes down. Yep. What I have once more is a big, long piece of rope. Still no applause. I'll do it one more time. So I like audience members that can take a hint. What I'm going to do this time with the ends of the... Oh, no, I broke the ends off. That was close. The first time that's happened again. I'll do the trick one last time. This time, in order to avoid being redundant, I'll do the trick one last time. And instead of cutting the rope using my magical scissors, I'm going to use my pocket knife. Sharpen my knife on my sleeve. Cut the rope. Ouch. Sharp. I'll take the rope. Well, I don't have to take the rope, it's mine. I will bundle the rope up on my left hand just like this and make that knot disappear. No, it's not there. And it's not there. Now, there is another knot that I use in my rope tricks. I'm sure you've all seen one of these before. It's called a slip knot. Take a knot, you tighten a rope like that. All you have to do is just tug on that knot and it pops right out of the rope. Nothing very 
magical about that unless you tie it in the middle of the rope like this. Then it becomes a jumping slip knot. Watch, if I pull on the knot here, it jumps over there. If I pull on it there, it jumps over there and grows two little legs and looks a lot different. This is a real slip knot. I can take that knot, slide it right off the rope, hang it in the air, anytime I want, I reach back, pluck it off, throw it back on again. Now in case these knots were a little bit too numerous or too complicated for some of you to follow, that's okay. Because at the end of this trick, I always prepare a resume of all the knots I do. And there they are. <laughs> How many people remember in 1977 Dealey Boppers? Just me. For those of you that don't remember, dealy boppers with little springs. People were on their heads. A star on one, a moon on the other one, pet rocks, Furbies. Things that had no purpose except to make someone a lot of money. Well, the year 2009 is well in here. They have a different souvenir for 2009. This is it. I saw this sit on the guy's shelf about three weeks ago, and I asked him what it did. He said, what's it do? It's really neat. If you pull on the yellow ball, the white ball goes up. If you pull on the white ball, the yellow ball goes up. <laughs> I said, so? He said, so? We'll explain how it works. I said, come on, pal, it's very simple. The white ball's attached to a string, runs up through the gray pipe, terminates at the yellow ball. You have a ball at either end of the string. Naturally, if you pull down on one, the other one goes back up. He said, that's a very interesting theory if it were true, but it isn't. He said, actually, the white ball down there is attached to the red ball up here. He said it may look like it's attached to the yellow ball over here, but the yellow ball down there is actually attached to the blue ball up here. At any time you could show me, it looked like the yellow ball and the white ball seemed to be connected. I said, you're a liar. He said, you're right. He said, to tell you the truth, I want to be perfectly honest, the white ball down there is actually attached to the blue ball over here. At the same time, the blue ball says the yellow ball down there. The yellow ball down there is attached to the red ball over here. At the same time, the red ball says the white ball down there. <laughs> I said, sold. He said $79.95. Well, $79.95 later, I had this thing at home, and I'll be darned if it didn't do for me exactly what it did for him. I could put on the yellow ball and make the white ball go up. I could put on the white ball and let the yellow ball go up. But there was one important fundamental difference. This curiosity, this object de art, now belonged to me. Huh? Being a red-blooded American male, I did what everybody else did. I took it apart and found nothing. None of them were connected to any of them. It was a piece of hollow plastic conduit or plumbing fixture that I just paid $80 for. Little fellow, about five years old, bought one earlier than me. He was doing his vertically like this. You know, I've had this thing for about three weeks now. I know I can pull it onto the white ball and make the yellow ball go up. I can pull it onto the yellow ball and make the white ball go up. I've also found the red ball seems to be attached to the yellow ball at the same time the red ball says the white ball. The white ball is attached to the blue ball at the same time the blue ball says the yellow ball. The yellow ball is actually attached to the white ball over here. What I don't know is how it works. By bringing it out here today on the show, I thought maybe one of you could figure it out. Now, if you do, don't blurt it out. Drop me a line or send me an email to DougAnderson.net. That's DougAnderson.net. Don't spell dot. Have a great day.